It's a great way to add boxing with exercises for an awesome sweat. You can do it anywhere, anytime, and on the heavy bag or shallow boxing. What I want to do is focus on awesome, clean combinations. You'll see them on screen, of course, as a reminder. And of course, enjoy it. Boxcon, it's a great way to burn calories while throwing your hands, getting in awesome shape on the Top Fitness YouTube channel. Let's go, guys. 10 minutes start right now. Let's go, let's go, guys. You're going to love this session. A jab, rear uppercut, kicks it all. Step in, step out. A one, six, step in, step out. Let's go. One, six, step in, step out. Get a little bounce between the combinations. We're going to move non-stop for 10 minutes. Three jab, rear uppercut. In, out. This box trying to think of the boxing component and the condition pieces. You want to throw your hands constantly with a little extra bounce in your step every combo. And you're going to move fast. Move around, change your positions in and out. One, six, left or right, in and out. Now a duck right, duck left, in and out. Duck, duck, bounce, in and out. Move, change direction. Duck, duck, in and out. Or work outside. Now we're going to go a jab, rear uppercut, step in, step out with a duck, duck. Let's go. Put it together. One, six. Get in, get out, duck, duck. One, six. Get in, get out, duck, duck. Continue. Let's go, guys. When you duck under, use your hips, you get under your opponent's hook. So you have to use your hips to do a pendulum movement, right to left, left to right. Now you can go a 1 6 duck, duck, in, out, or a 1 6 in, out, duck, duck. Both work. Just get under and move. We're going to do a 1 2 1 2. Step in, step out. And I want strong footwork as you do that. Let's go. One, two, one, two. Get in, get out. One, two, one, two. Power in, power back. Beautiful. Work it out outside. That's where the money's at. You guys working outside. I love it out here. One, two, one, two, step forward, step back. It's going to be the same thing. Now, add a jump, guys. Add a jump. One, two, one, two, in, out, get up. One, two, one, two, in, out. Step back, get up in the air. Let's go. One, two, one, two, in, out, jump. One, two, one, two, in, out, jump. Get your shoulders on that one, two, one, two, same level. Really strong foot placement in the front leg to push back. Really strong foot placement in the back to push forward. Yes, keep working. Six minutes and 40 seconds remaining. One, two, one, two, and out. Get up. Coming up, we have the one, three, move outside. Jab, three to the body, three to the outside. Now, of course, you can throw an uppercut if you want. Put that lead hand, so it could be a one, five, three to the outside, or one, hook to the body. It could be either or. Lead side all the way. Jab, hook to the body, work the outside. Three movements left, three movements right. Come on. Now we're going to add a sprawl to this. One, five, or one, three body. Sprawl and move. Yes. One, 
five for one rebound. Sprawl and move. Beautiful work, guys. Come on, Pop, lay down. Keep working now. Do your combination first, one, three to the bottom, and sprawl second, and move to the outside third. As soon as your feet touch the ground from that sprawl, you start to move. There you go. We're halfway done today's workout, you guys. Come on, this is it. You gotta push the limits. Only a couple more to go. Nice and smooth on this move. Nice and smooth. Coming up, we have a one, two, five, six shift to your left. Look at that. One, two, upper, upper. Turn the hips back to neutral and continue to work. Shift back. One, two, five, six. Shift. Return. One, two, five, six. Shift. Return. Let's go. Yes, guys. Push hard. One, two, five, six. Shift. Return. You're going to throw a cross lead hook. Shift to the opposite side. Let's go. Two, three. That's it. Turn. Two, three. Turn. That's right. Two, three. Turn. Two, three, shift. Two, three, shift. Bring it back. There you go. There you go. Two, three, on a boxing stand. Come on, Scott. You got this. Pushing three minutes to go. Yeah, we're gonna throw in the jab cover. Let's go work the jab and the cover starting right now. One, cover, move. Jab, cover, move. Now again, if you want to double up here the jab, double up the jab. If you want to triple up the jab, triple up the jab. If you want to throw a jab, jab, cross, throw a jab, jab, cross, and a cover. Just a quick reset before you get to one eight. Where are we going now? One eight after a cover. All right, let's go. One cover eight. Six the glasses. One cover eight. And that eight is the money shot. You got. Let's go. One cover overhand right. One cover overhand right. Yeah. One cover overhand. That's what we want. That's it. You're coming right over the top. Now we're going to add the blue body to that to really pick your players apart. One cover eight. Lead hook to the body. So when that right shoulder, that rear shoulder comes down, I want you to turn it into that lead hook to the body. One cover eight. Blue body. Boom. One cover eight. Three body. Gentlemen, let's go. Guys. Now watch one cover eight. Three body. One, two, three, four. One cover eight. Three body. One, two, three. Squid step. Let's go. Continue with condition. If you want more, you can just work out twice, but every time you go on the pace set. Effort. One, cover, eight, three body. Switch, two, three, four. Yes. Look, actually, with that overhand right, you guys get that hook to the body. Those switch steps are really clean and precise. You're confident. You're moving your legs well without throwing these awesome combos. We're going to finish strong with one, two, long, stop. Ready? Let's go. You see how fast I'm punching? Punch faster than you full range. Full range of motion. Come on. 30 seconds to finish. 
more. Harder work. Oh, you guys, win the belt, win that title, win the money. Come on, guys, you got this. 15 seconds. If this was a challenge, would you win the prize? 10 seconds. There you go. Pick it up. 6, 5, 4, 3, do subscribe. If you found fitness YouTube channel, you guys are incredible. Join this channel as a member. You can access the fight sheet, heavy bag, conditioning. by one of the premier magic writers at the time as the best fatties ever printed. The forums not only provides you with the body, it also spits out a sapling token during every player's upkeep. This allows it to quickly populate the board with an army to support its own massive 7-7 body. As good as Burton Force once was, it's been a long time since it's been anywhere close to the best creature in magic, and most of today's magic players aren't particularly impressed by this one. After all, it hasn't seen competitive play in more than two decades, and a recent 2018 Dominaria didn't lead to an even play in the standard. But that begs the question, how big was Version 4? Actually, this Nine. video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. Use the link in the description to visit the next store. One. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Hone, and welcome to another episode of How Good Was It, a series where I do a deep dive into a single competitive card in history, generally focusing on cards whose best competitive games are behind them. This card was chosen by you, the viewers, in a poll I posted on the community tab. I haven't done a green card in the series so far, so I fitted two powerful green creatures from Magic's early days against one another, Erdem Jin and Burden Force. In the end, the Force came out on top. So... Let's answer the question so many of you want to know. How good was Burton Force, actually? Burton Force was printed in 1997, Tempest, and players were immediately impressed by it. Before Burton Force, the best expensive green creature was probably Alfred's Force of Nature. While it is cheaper to cast overall and larger, too, it came at the cost of spending four green mana at the beginning of your upkeep, otherwise it turned around and punched you in the face. Burton Force was on a whole other level. It might be more expensive and have smaller stats, but there's no downside at all in the tech stack, and the upside it has is amazing. Getting a sample in every upkeep which means that most of the time before your opponent can ever do anything about it, the force gives you a sapling. And if you didn't deal with it quickly, you'd have lots of saplings that can pressure your opponent or protect you while you smash them with the force. Six. The one problem with Burden Force was that mana cost. Seven. But in every deck it's ever been successful in, that wasn't an issue. Eight. That's because upon being printed, the force simply became one of the first creatures players tried to cheat into play. After all, if you can get a Burden Force into play ahead of schedule, your opponent doesn't stand much of a chance. Burton Force made its major competitive debut Two. on the biggest stage possible, the 1998 World Championship. At the time, Worlds consisted of playing a few different formats in the playing center. At the 1998 Championship, Burton Force was playing successful decks in two different formats, 30. block constructed and standard, and in both formats, it was played in the same kind of deck, a deck that represented two significant firsts in the history of competitive magic. These decks use the engine of survival of the fittest and recurring nightmare. Survival lets you pay green and discard a creature to search up a creature, and recurring nightmare is a repeatable source of reanimation that requires you to sacrifice a creature in play and return the nightmare to your hand. These decks, called recurring survival, were both the first reanimator and the first toolbox deck to succeed at magic's highest level of composition. Let's take a look at the block version of the deck first, as it uses smaller card pools. Only the three sets and tempest block were legal. While Burton Forest didn't play much of a role in the toolbox side of things, instead it was the deck's main reanimation target. You could discard it with survival, which you often did after searching it up, and then you could reanimate it with the nightmare. Burton Forest is a big part of why reanimation became viable at the 1998 World Championship. Before this, there just weren't very many creatures around who were worth choosing to play like this. They were imposing creatures for sure, but most of them had downsides. 
Six. So instead of five minute jump rope, uh, five minute jump rope and 20, uh, 20 burpees in between, I did 10 minute shadow boxing and uh, 40 burpees in between. And because I'm using a VPN. It's gonna take so much longer. Oh, there we go. Two, one. Coming up next is the two, one, two, the cross, jab, cross. And three, two, one, cross, jab, cross. Go. Jab cross. All straight punches. Keep your hands up. Next combination. Step left. Lead uppercut. Step right. Right uppercut. Three, two, one. Go. Step left. Left uppercut. Step right. Right uppercut. Step left, left uppercut, step right, right uppercut. Keep moving, keep moving. Three, two, one. Jab, jab, cross, slip, right. Jab, jab, cross. Slip, left, go, jab, jab, cross, slip, right, jab, jab, cross, slip, right. It's a fast slip back in two, the one, one, two, jab, jab, cross. Three, two, one. Next combination is the lead hook, rear uppercut, lead hook, slip left. Lead hook, rear uppercut, lead hook, slip left. Three, two, one, go. Lead hook, rear uppercut, lead hook, slip left. Let's work. Lead hook, rear uppercut, lead hook, slip left. Hook from the lead side, uppercut from the rear side, hook from the lead side, slip. Three, two, one, next combination, switch stance. Go with jab, go punch from the lead leg, switch stance, jab, ready, go, switch stance, jab, switch stance, jab, switch stance, jab. Load on this combination. Good work, good work, keep it up. Fast and furious. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Wow. Next combination is a jab, cross, lead hook to the body. Jab, cross, lead hook to the body. Ready? Go. Jab, cross, lead hook body. Jab, cross, lead hook body. Keep going. Keep it up. Keep your focus. Nice and consistent. You are not tired. Three, two, one. Excellent work. Next combination is a jab and then three straight punches. A jab, three straight punches. Ready? Go. Jab, three straight punches. Jab, three straight punches. Three, two, one. Next combination is a lead hook. Three straight punches. Ready? Go. Lead hook. Three straight shots. Lead hook. Three straight shots. Let's do it. First throw. Lead hook. Three straight punches. You need a lot of movement to get a good workout in. Tough boxing training. Heavy weight or shadow box. Three, two, one. Next combination. Cross, jab, duck left, duck right. Cross, jab, duck left, duck right. Ready? Go. Cross, jab, duck left, duck right. Two, one, duck left, duck right. Let's get it done. A 10 minute boxing workout. High energy. Three, two, one. Next combination. Two power squats. Jab, overhand right. Ready, go. Two power squats. One, two, jab, overhand right. Two power squats. One, two, jab, overhand right. Easy to execute. Let your hands go. Shadow boxing or punching bag. You can do it on either one. Or have fun get me done. Almost there. Three, two, one. Take two steps to the left. Throw three punches. Two steps to the right. Throw three punches. Ready? Let your hands go. Two steps. Let your hands go. Two steps. Let your hands go. You got it. Perform. Push through. Three, two, one. Next combination, jab, hook to the body, cross hook, jab, hook to the body, cross hook, let's go. Three, two, one. One set to go. Four split lunges. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Ready? Go. One, two, three, four. Jab, cross, hook, cross. One, two, three, four. Jab, cross, hook, cross. Let's go. Yep, 
That's it. Nice and easy on the legs. We didn't cross legs today. We're just pushing it through the arms from the simulate five legs to finish this turn. Two. One. You guys are amazing. This is a 10 minute boxing workout. You can do anywhere on every day. No child boxing. Do it twice if you feel that long. Good work. Warriors, you got it done. Awesome work today. If you want to subscribe to the new file for the oh, channel, man. hit that little punch right there. And of course, if you want to level up your workouts for more premium content, hit that link right there. See you soon. Let's go. The first person to play in the early game, then pretty much. Right, I've seen the video. Just fine. Whatever. I say way better. For that reason, I would like to challenge you to a steak contest. One steak, one side dish. One. I accept. I love it. Two. I love it. You beat me. I want to rematch in my place. Three. Five. Don't do this. Four. Yes or no? Yes? Okay. Let's make it official. Oh. All right, another. Six. And for my sake, I like to use a swing on one of you. Use a swing. For my seasoning, I'm going to use salt, pepper, and my own. Ten. And boss with us, I'm a retired mixed martial artist. I won three gold titles in Japan in organization and tankers. And then I became the first European UFC heavyweight champion as well. Let's not forget in the UFC hall. What a lot of people don't know is that I went four years to culinary school. I'm a trained fighter and I'm a trained fighter. And I'm here to keep two guys there. I'm also using the same exact steak for 15 spares. An Australian Wagyu Mother is for seven. For the seasoning though, I'm doing it different. I'm going to keep it real simple. I put a amount of salt, followed by freshly ground black pepper, and garlic powder. Puga, are you scared? Let me tell you something. I did martial arts all my life. And I had to stop because of my injury. Pretty bad. The fact that I have a chance to throw hands with a superstar like Boss, you think I'm going to let that go? Tell me. You better believe I'm going to win this steak battle. Hey, Guga, are your steaks coming? Oh, come here along the front. So, like I said, this is going to take me away. Let there be fire. So, we're not going to put steak in the oven. We're going to put good in the pan. Beautiful steak in here. If you ever make oil, make sure that you know that it cooks faster than a regular steak. Some garlic already. Tell it. You add that to it. 16. Oh, oh, oh. 17. I think the steaks are ready. I'm going to put them up here. The rest. 18. Ooh. Okay, for my steak, it's going to be real quick, everybody. First, we're going to put a nice, wonderful sear. I'm going to put these steaks nice and fast. you got to remember, it is a wagyu steak, so it's not flat up like there's no tomorrow. Once you start getting flat up, we'll turn it just like this. We'll keep doing it until you get a nice, golden brown stripe. Take a look at this. Now, that's what I'm talking about. Now, I'll put it in the right heat. My steak is ready. All right, so we add a little bit more salad, and now we want to flambe it. Seven, yeah, okay, thank you. We add the cream. Eight, hey, don't worry, it's all in the world. And now to finish it up, butter, everybody, and those who need much. Tiny bit of lemon zest for some acidity to keep it dry. And now the slice. Perfectly in there, just the way I like it. Oh, now look at this. Medium rare. Oh, so fresh. Oh, so nice. Oh, so boss with you. Oh, so at a lot point. Hey, that's right. And of course, that's the UFC chunk. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So cool. Now we play. I made that my beautiful sauce. I'm going to put my steaks on my beautiful sauce. Finish it with the garnish. It's all about how you dress things up. That is important. If you miss out, you want her to wear a nice dress. Same thing with the steak. For my side dish, I'm going to be making a beautiful shabata with boraca, and it's going to be absolutely delicious. And let's not forget, nice, wonderful cheese for the sauce. 
on my side dish, I'm going to make cooked celery with the cheese sauce. Okay, so I already had this water going, and now I put it here on. Uh, this is, of course, to cook the celery. It's going to be time for the cheese sauce in a little bit. I'm going to need cheese for that. This is for the sauce. First, I'm going to cut it nice and thin. This thin right here. Look at that. Now we should be open the door so that it's just like that. Bah, I had a sweet little ingredient. So do I. Bone marrow, the bar. A little bit of salt Four. on the top. Some black pepper. And into the boiler, you don't have all coming. All right, so the celery is ready. I'm going to drain it. And then we're going to use this plate to make salt. Seven. Ooh, look at the color. Yeah, very nice. Wait until the cheese gets on top of that. So my chili cheese is pretty simple. I got red peppers, oregano, green hot chili flakes, garlic, a little amount of parsley, vinegar, salt and pepper, and okay. finish it off with avocado oil. Now mix it well, and my chili cheese is soft. All right, all right, let's go. 10 minute intense heavy bag workout. Move around the heavy bag, drop the job a little bit. This is your warm up, number one. Lots of footwork. And jump. Move your head. Jab cross. One, two, three, 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 three. And move your head. Add a duck at the end. Left side. Ten, ready, go. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Back work. One, two, three. Jab cross. There you go. Got a little more power on the one, two, three.
go. One, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Squat. One, two, one, two. Times ten. Looks like this. Squat. One, two, one, two. Ready? Again, three, two, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Good. My heart rate says 220. Not right. That's right. Oh, it's going down. There it goes. We're back to normal. Let's go. Now, hook body, hook head, power times ten. Ready? Go. One, two, one, two, three, two, watch. One, two, one, two, three, two, duck left, three. Let's go. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. to the body, right hook to the head, pretend, go. Again, box jabs. Here comes in jab. In jab.
two more. One more. Good. Back over here. Guys, we have 45 seconds. Burpees or sprawls, go. One, Burpees. Two, oh. two. Sprawl. Three. Sprawl. Four. Five. Come on. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Hold to the heavy bag. Straight punches. Ten seconds. Go. Coaching. I hope it's clear and precise and you take that quick, quick limited amount of education. Hit this workout two, three, four, five times. Watch how much the condition improves, how fast you pick up the boxing combinations on the heavy bag, and also how effective it can actually be when you do just a 10 minute intense heavy bag workout here on the Nate Fowler Fitness YouTube channel. I hit almost 200 calories. How did you do? Remember in the comments, let me know how you guys did for your first time around. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's important to get this channel to grow. And of course, let me know how you enjoy the workout. I'll see you warriors for the next video here on the Hit Bell Fitness. Today I'm filming from the old mining town of Cerro Gordo, near Death Valley in California. Now back in the day, this was a rough place. Here's quintessential Old West town. The disagreeable bird told stout, warm-hearted, go-ahead man, the bowels of the earth. So naturally, my question is, what did these bowel-tearing men like to eat? Well, one popular meal was biscuits and gravy, which I'm making using a recipe from 1581. So thank you, Craig Coffee, for sponsoring this video as we eat like an Old West model. This time on a tasting history. Three. Four. Now back in the late 19th and early 20th century, this was a thriving community with a number of saloons, restaurants, dance Six. halls, hotels, and other businesses all catering to the needs of the miners who were extracting silver and lead from the surrounding mountains. And whether they were coming into town to eat or if they were staying out by the mound and making themselves a good meal, they relied basically on the three beans. Beans, bacon, and biscuits. And last week I made the beans and bacon, so this week I'm making the biscuits. Now sometimes they would use sourdough to make biscuits, but very popular at the time was a combination of cream of tartar and salaritus. Salaritus being a salty form of baking soda. At that time, there were not a lot of cookbooks coming out of the American West, but I actually think I found kind of the perfect one for this, because this mining town was said to have basically built Los Angeles, and so I'm going to be working from Los Angeles cookery from 1881. Cream of tartar biscuits, Mrs. Millicent, one quart of flour, two heaping teaspoons of pure cream of tartar, 
a piece of butter, two thirds the size of an egg, well worked in flour, one heaping teaspoonful of babbage salaricus dissolved in sweet milk. Make the dough as soft as can be kneaded conveniently, roll a half inch thick, cut in biscuits, and bake in a fish oven. Six. There's nothing in this recipe that they wouldn't have possibly had access to. But milk would have definitely been a prize commodity, and if they were up in the hills, they probably wouldn't have had fresh milk. But they would have had access to evaporated milk. It was a fairly new invention from the 1850s by Dale Borden. You can use it basically just like milk, but you can add a little bit of water if you want. And you could even use it in your coffee, like the coffee that I'm making from today's sponsor, Trade. Trade is a coffee subscription service that helps you make better coffee at home. Or in my case, a uh, ghost town that you happen to be traveling to. Essentially, you tell Trade what you like in a coffee, how often you drink it, and how you drink it. And they will line you up a feed from 55 local roasters with over 450 different roasts. And that coffee is delivered to your door within just a couple of days of being roasted. And they have roasts that are perfect for any way that you take your coffee, whether it's French press, traditional drip, cold brew, or, like me, making cowboy coffee today. You just heat a quart of water in the pot until it's just warm, then you add about a fourth cup of coffee to the pot, and you let it slowly come to a boil. Boil it for about four minutes, then take it off the heat and pour a little cold water around the side. That's going to the hot brown to the bottom of the pot. And she's ready to go. Unfortunately, Six. I broke my trade mug on the bumpy road up here, but Seven. while I went for a new one, the tin cup did the trick. And right now, trade is offering thirty percent off of your first month when you use my link in the description, drinktrade.com slash Max Miller, and then thirty percent off of your first month. Then you will have coffee to make while you make your biscuits and gravy. For which you will need two cups or 240 grams of flour, one and a half heaping teaspoons of cream of tartar, a half teaspoon of salt, four tablespoons of butter, a heaping half teaspoon of baking soda, about three quarters of a cup or 175 milliliters of milk, either regular milk or evaporated milk, and that is it. And you'll notice that I cut all the ingredients in half because I don't want to make that many biscuits right now. This will still make about a dozen. So first, whisk the cream of tartar and salt into the flour, and then add the butter in little pieces and work it into the flour with your finger. You want to leave some nice big pieces in there, though. Then stir the baking soda into the milk and pour it into the flour mixture. I honestly don't know why she mixes it into the milk rather than just putting it with the flour, which is what it would usually be done today, but I'm going to follow what she says. Now work the dough until it just comes together. If you need a little more milk, you can go ahead and add it, but you just want to add enough to make the dough stick. Once you have a nice dough, set it onto a lightly floured surface and knead it gently for just about a minute. You don't want to overwork it. And then press it out or roll it out to about a half inch thick. Then cut it into biscuits. And the scraps you can kind of roll out again and cut into more biscuits. It's a very forgiving dough. Now you can place these on a tray, but more commonly back then, they would have put into a well-buttered or large-greased cast iron skillet. Then set that in the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit, 220 Celsius, and bake for about 15 minutes while we take a look at what else old miners in the Old West used to eat. On January 24, 1848, James Marshall, working at a sawmill owned by Johann Sutter on the American River in California, found a small shiny stone in the Milwaukee. That was the first gold nugget found that kicked off the California gold rush. And within three years, over 200,000 people made their way from all Six. over the world to find their fortune. During which time, most Seven. of them lost the fortune because the price of everything absolutely skyrocketed and up to food. A breakfast in San Francisco that cost 15 cents in 1848 <laughs> worth by the end of 1850 $6. A single egg could cost a dollar, and a barrel of flour went from $3 to $400. That is about 